had to take a crap during my mother's funeral. And while I'm sitting there, I look over and I see my Aunt Joan. She's wearing a sleeveless formal dress and I can see part of the side of her right breast. This is my earliest memory. To be honest with you, the only reason I remember that is because that's the first question all the head shakers in here ask you. Now tell us, Archie, what is your earliest memory? Great fellas of Stockton are. You see, before I die, my soul goes up there to hang out with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The doctors down here are going to slice and dice my brain. They're going to crack open my cranium. All in the name of science, of course. The University of trained doctors dedicated to finding out what part of my brain made me cut open a mother or two in Cincinnati. They'll sit around at lunch and they'll brag, You know, we really are getting close to isolating the cell that made Archie cut the ears off that priest in Gainesville. Pass the tartar sauce. What makes me tick? <laughs> Dark, evil, unrepentant, amoral, deprived, and disgusting are all words that can be used to describe Archie Nunn. Archie is a convicted pseudo killer awaiting his execution in death row. He should probably be ignored. However, much like a car crash, we have to watch. So I killed a few people, like Gary Ritterman and David Summers. Welcome to my freak show, my court approved freak show. So what are you folks doing here anyway? Now, I know why I'm here, because I've got to be, but you folks, you don't have to be here. You don't have to listen to my sob story about how I was sexually abused as an Eagle Scout. I had a physical abuser for a father and a drunk for a mother. Name the cliche, baby, and I had it. Or did I? I'll give you folks a hint on this one. Everything I just said was a bald-faced lie. But you don't know that, do you? Heck, I could say anything and you wouldn't know. I could be one of them pathological liars. Or I could be lying about being a pathological liar. Or I could be lying about lying about being a pathological liar. But the point is, you don't know, do you? I really don't care. Now before you go there, sitting, thinking that this is going to be some moralistic death penalty rant involving the Christian rapsers, the liberal lefties, and the middle of the Rodians, let me set one thing straight. I am going to die. I deserve to die. It's the law. I'm not arguing. Fry my butt, I say. So many people interested in my death. I thought, well, how about I tell them about my life? Me. You don't need to be a psychic brain to know in six weeks when I go in that room back there, I ain't coming out alive. The great state of Florida has already written my final chapter, and in the end, it will go like this. Before I am taken to the chamber, I will meet with my spiritual advisor. I've already requested an orthodox rabbi. Oh, come on, people. That was a joke. I like their food, but I love Jesus. Then I will be taken to the chamber. It has glass on three sides, but the glass is covered by a curtain, so the audience can't see straight away. It's all so theatrical. And then they'll sit me down and strap me in, and then they'll let the audience in. And with everyone watching, the warden will ask me for my last words. I've been thinking about this last words part a whole lot recently, and I've come up with a couple of choices. I'll give you folks a preview, if you will. I'm coming, Elizabeth! This is the big one! Or maybe, that's all, folks. Or maybe I'll sit around acting like I don't know what's going on, all confused. And then right before they hit the switch, go! Now, I'll admit that all those are a little jokey and maybe don't show the proper respect, but I'll tell you what I think I'm really going to say. The one thing no one knows about. My first time. My first killing. My father was a good man, and that is the truth. He always got along with everyone, and he had a great career. And he was an electrical engineer for Disney. He's the one that made Lincoln's head snap forward. But growing up, he didn't have much time for me. And my mother, let's just say I was raised on television. Television was my mother, father, priest, friend. You have to admit how valuable television is. It's got comedy, news, drama, history, and most importantly, it's always there for me. I knew that if I ever had a question, it could be answered by Fred McMurray or Mr. French. No matter how many times that I saw Wiley Coward fall off a cliff, 
Next day, I'd turn on the TV, and he'd be right back up there to fall off for me again. They were all my friends. And they would never be too tired or too busy to play. Or too drunk. There was this one lady, and I don't know if she was jealous or what. But she was always trying to come between me and my friends. She tried telling me that I was losing touch with reality. So I had to very carefully explain to her that my friends are as real as anyone else's. One night, we had a real knockdown, drag out fight. She had started drinking. I went to my room and I watched TV. And while I'm watching TV, I hear some breathing. I look in the doorway and, and it's her. She's there breathing real heavy, panting, sweating, weaving back and forth with a claw hammer in hand. Ty wasn't scared. I knew I could take her. She was puny. But I realized I was not the object of her anger. I looked at her. It was too late. She had already taken the hammer and drove it through my frame. There was an explosion of glass and sparks. Suddenly, they were all gone. Cane, fish, punch. All gone. Through my rage, I was seething. I took a deep breath, and I looked at her, and in the calmest voice I could muster, I said, it'll be okay. Let's just clean up the mess. I just confused her. So she handed me the hammer, and she turned out of the room to go get the dust bucket. And when she turned, I took the claw of the hammer, and I dug it into her skull. I dragged her back into the room. She started screaming. I took the head of the hammer, and I slammed it into her throat. She fell on the ground. She's down there, gurgling, holding her throat, kicking her legs, going in circles like her, like whoop, 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 whoop. I started to say, what is it, Lassie? The little timid fall down the well again? And now she's really crying. But I can tell that she's just trying to toy with me, play with my emotions, turn my friends against me. Actually, she owed my friends an apology. I picked her up by her neck, and I slammed her head first into the TV. The jagged edge of the glass, ripping her throat. And I said, you say you're sorry to my friends. I picked up the hammer, I slammed it on her back, and I said, you tell him you're sorry. You tell Aunt B you're sorry. You tell Fred Sanford you're sorry. You apologize to Adam 12. Johnny Carson, Johnny Quest, tell them what they won, Johnny, to the moon, Alice. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Hi, Rob, Norm, Lou, as quickly as you can, snatch the bevel from my hand. Oh, Romeo, oh, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Who loves you, baby? Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Hogan, this message will self-destruct in five seconds. M-I-C-K-E freaking Y. Why, why, why? And then I realized that she wasn't moving no more. So I let the body drop, but the head stayed in there. I turned the head around. I could have sworn that she was smiling at me. But I realized it was because her lips had been shaved right off and her face. Having not killed before, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I sat back down. I drank my Coca-Cola. And I just stared at her. It was like watching television. It wasn't as good as television. But I liked this show. I wanted to see this show again. And that's the last thing I can remember. Except. I had to take a crap at her feet.